And we welcome you to another episode of Hurry Hard, the Manitoba Curling Show on Shaw TV. I am your host, Kevin Hirschfield. Today we come to you from one of the more well-known curling clubs in Winnipeg and Manitoba, the Fort Rouge. And we hope you're hungry for some curling talk this week because this is the site of the Chicken Chef Masters Men's Bond Spiel. Masters curlers, of course, are those 60 years and older. And there are two provincial championship berths on the line in this bond spiel. So we will talk with some of the top masters curlers in Manitoba plus Reed Carruthers is going to join us he's off to a great start this year and of course looking ahead to the men's provincial championship coming up in a few months but first let's take a look at our feature club today the Fort Rouge the first Fort Rouge curling club was built in 1919 on the corner of Kyle Moore and Osborne before being relocated in the early 50s, Loblaws came along and said we'd like that property. And so the members uh, got together and they were able to use this particular uh, lot of land. And the uh, six-sheeter was, was uh, built and incorporated and they were ready to go 59. Uh, it's the fall of 59, they started their seasons. Now it stands on Daly Street and nearly 100 years later, the club is one of the strongest in the province. Over the years, the membership have been very supportive. You know, not only do they come out and curl, they get involved in the organizational aspect If we have an event on. There's lots of people who are, are jumping in to help out. And we've had a strong board because of that, who have, have sort of kept a, a lot of the principles that the, the founding members came up with when they were they started this club. We're busy every night. Uh, and we have renters during throughout the day and we have renters on the weekend. So we're really fortunate that way. While successful off the ice, the club has seen its fair share of success on the ice as well. The Billy Walsh rink won two Canadian men's titles in the 1950s, while the Oris Mellis Chuck team had a magical 1972, winning a world championship. The club is also home to the defending provincial championship men's team skipped by Mike McEwen. And on the women's side, a Fort Rouge rink has represented Manitoba 13 times at the national championship. Most notably, teams skipped by Connie Laliberti, which won three Canadian titles and the world title in 1984. We, we're, we're lucky to have those kinds of people because it, it lets people see the, the, uh, the impact that uh, high-performance curlers have. I would say the atmosphere is great. Uh, there's lots of wonderful people over here. Um, they call it the home of friendly curling for a good reason. All right, joined now by the man who has owned this decade when it comes to Manitoba Masters men's curling, Ron Westcott. Four times you've won the Masters provincial title since 2010. I guess this is kind of your drive for five this year, would you say? How do you think uh, the team is looking heading into that drive for five? Well, this year we've added a couple of different players. so. Uh, you know, it, it's always exciting uh, to start the year and to look forward to an opportunity to uh, represent Manitoba. So I don't care what level it is, it's, it's exciting when you can put the buffalo on your back and represent Manitoba. Why do you think your teams have had so much success here since 2010, four provincial titles? What can you attribute that to? Well, I think the fact that uh, at, at our level, you can still play the game. Uh, if your hips and knees are still in pretty good shape, I think all the curlers that uh, go into our provincials, they all, they all have that competitive spirit. And it's just a matter of, uh, it's the same teams you, that you're gunning against when, you, when you're back in your 20s and 30s. It's just, uh, hey, we were fortunate to win uh, the seniors once and the masters four times. I imagine one of the highlights of the last few years, winning the Canadians 2015, I believe it was. What are your memories from that? Uh, what did you enjoy about that experience? Well, it's just that we were close on a couple of other occasions. And finally, to say you've won uh, the Canadian is it, pretty exciting. And when you look back in the history of Manitoba, we've had some great curlers that have kind of broken through at the seniors or masters level, like Gary Ross went on to win the Canadian seniors. Randy Newfeld, another great player who, uh, who went it went, finally won the, the Seniors Championship and went, went on to win the Canadian. Uh, Carl German, another example. There, there's so many great teams and players in Manitoba so that when we finally get a chance to a Canadian, it seems like, wow, we've made it uh, and now it gets easy. What keeps you coming back to the rink after all these years? 
and all these provincial championships that you've won. It's a great way to get out of the house. <laughs> and uh, no, we, I, I love playing here at Fort Rouge. We have a, a great like local team. We have an eight-man team here, and it's kind of fun just to play, keep playing the game, a game you love. And uh, and so yeah, it's just a chance to to, to gain, keep playing the game, and to uh, to have some success. That's a bonus. And finally, you're the coach of the uh, Michelle Englot Skip team. Uh, she's replacing Christy McDonald, who retired from curling in the off season. Uh, they just had a great performance at the last Grand Slam curling event. How do you like uh, how they're playing so far this year? Well, it's a, we have a new skip this year on the team, uh, Michelle Englot out of Regina, and uh, it's been uh, an exciting. It's a progression uh, tr from the start of the year, just getting to know the team. And uh, my daughter plays lead, Renora plays lead, and my daughter-in-law, Leslie Wilson Westcott, plays second. So when they asked me to coach, I couldn't say no. But it's again, it's some, it's a way to kind of put something back into the game. Uh, I enjoy the strategy part of the game, so to impart some of that into them, they're all great curlers. And uh, to finally have success at a big Grand Slam like last weekend, it was uh, so exciting for both myself, but mainly for them. Great curler. And and a great coach, Ron Westcott. Thank you very much for the time. Another Masters men's competitor joining us now, Carl German. Uh, Carl, many might remember you from 2002 when your team won not only the Manitoba Senior Championships, but the Canadian Senior Championships, and then you went on to Worlds and won silver. Uh, what are some memories of 2002 for you? I know it's quite a, quite a ways back, I guess, now, but what are some memories of that? Well, that was our first year in the seniors, and we had put together a team, and Quite frankly, the year started out extremely bad. <laughs> we couldn't win a game if our life depended on it. And then uh, all of a sudden we got on a roll and uh, uh, everything just clicked. Uh, the team was working well together. Uh, uh, we stayed together and uh, as I say, we went on a 29 and two roll uh, uh, to get to the, you know, to win the Canadians. And uh, as I say, then we uh, were fortunate to get to the Worlds, uh, but uh, if you know or not, uh, I wasn't allowed to go because of the age limit restriction between the world's and the Canadian uh, eligibilities. So uh, I was stuck in a six month uh, limbo gap between uh, my birthday being on, in December. The world said I had to be 50 by July 1st rather than December 31st. So uh, Ron Westcott actually uh, took my place in that. and. Uh, and came out with silver. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate, I guess. <laughs> You're on the Masters scene now, looking for your first provincial title there. How hungry are you after experiencing those Canadian championships in 02? How hungry are you to kind of get back representing Manitoba on that Canadian scene? Very much so. It's, yeah. uh, uh, like I say, we've, uh, we've been coming close every year. Uh, two years ago, we uh, made the playoffs, uh, or actually we had a tiebreaker to get into the playoffs. Last year we were third uh, after going uh, undefeated in the round robin. Uh, this year we're hoping we go from fifth to third to first. So uh, <laughs> the, the, the trick here is to, is to get to the provincials first and that's always the toughest with the, the caliber of curling that still exists even in the Masters here. Who are some teams you think you're going to have to go through at provincials to get to that next level? Well, there's the couple that are right in this bond spiel, yeah. and of course, the, there's uh, Ron Westcott. Is uh, you know, combine him with Doug Harrison on the same team. I mean, that's a formidable team, uh, regardless of uh, what else you know anybody else throws at you. But some of the other people here, uh, you know, Dave Green's been around for a long time. Uh, uh, the people, uh, like I say, it's just it it doesn't get any easier as you grow older. Because uh, those guys that were kicking your butt before <laughs> have come moved up right with you and are still kicking your butt now. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good. It, the, the camaraderie is, is, I guess, a little better than, uh, than the competition in, in men's, for instance. Uh, it's, uh, you're, you, work, you curl hard on the ice, but uh, after the game, uh, it's a little more uh, friendly. Sure. <laughs> How many more years do you see yourself curling at a competitive level like this? Fifteen. Oh. <laughs> I'll be 65 this year, so I figured if I can, you know, I'm still sliding pretty good and uh, being, my knees are holding out very well, so as, as long as that keeps going, uh, I'll keep going, but uh, realistically, do I expect, every year it's getting harder, let's sure. face it, because there's the younger, younger generation keeps moving up on you, so uh, uh, and you know, like I say, they beat you before, they'll beat you again. 
but uh, but hey, there's always the hope, and uh, that's what us old fellas got to live on. Well, best, of, <laughs> best of luck to you, Carl. Thanks so much for this. And coming up next on Hurry Hard, Mike Valente with a little social media hit. Thank you very much, Kevin Hirschfield. And that's right, on our show, we always like to infuse the social media. A lot of our top curlers from around the world are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, including Brad Jacobs, who had the most amazing shot at the Grand Slam of curling just a few weeks ago. Take a look at this. This was in the round robin. I mean, come on, that's exactly what you're looking for right there. And you know, a shot like that makes you scream, it makes you cheer. It may even make you say something like, oh, baby. And Brad Gushu had the chance to say just that when he met with Bob Cole, legendary hockey play-by-play -play announcer. Mr. Cole received the Order of Canada a couple months back. Two great Newfoundlanders in that photo. You're stunned as me arse by. Yes, that's right. Can you say that on TV? I'm sorry. That's all the Newfie talk I know. Team Terranzoni received a nice note from a young fan when they were in beautiful Cranbrook, BC for the Grand Slam of Curling. And speaking of Cranbrook, both Team Flaxy and Team Anerson definitely enjoyed their experience in the Kootenays as they were checking out the sites. That'll do it for our social media update. A reminder that we're online all the time. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find us at Shaw TV Winnipeg. All right, we'll get you back to Kevin Hirschfield at the Fort Rouge Curling Club in just a few minutes. You're watching Hurry Hard on Shaw TV. The Granite Curling Club in Winnipeg was named because its members wanted to play with granite stones rather than the iron rocks, which had been used by the first curlers in Manitoba.